Today we're gonna to look at creating soft light portraits and getting out of your comfort zone with your photography. Yesterday I picked up a lens that I've actually owned before and have sold because I didn't like it. And, and not that I didn't like the lens, it's actually a beautiful lens. It's the Fuji 23 millimeter F2, tiny little lens, super beautiful. That lens hood, the way it clicks on, love it, really nice. The problem is the focal length. 35 millimeter equivalent is something I am not good at shooting with. I just don't seem to compose well with that focal length and it frustrates me. So I usually don't use it, but that's not awesome because it's a really useful focal length and it's something that I really need to get better with. So I picked it up. This is not a video about that lens. This is a video about the idea of figuring out things that you're maybe not very good at, things you're not comfortable with, things that you wanna work on and forcing yourself to work on them. Last night was very much that case for me. I came home, it was snowy and cold out and I knew I wanted to make a video and I had an idea for a video, but it felt, I guess it felt vulnerable, you know, because I knew what I was gonna be making was something that I wasn't very good at. I've done a couple of videos on how to create like dramatic portraiture lighting and that's something I'm really comfortable with, something I, I feel like I'm actually pretty good at. What I'm not very good at is super even soft lighting uh, that's really allowing that full kind of features to come through. Another thing I'm, I'm really not very good at is self-portraits. I get pretty, I don't get uncomfortable, but I just, I don't feel like I know how to pose properly. Even though I feel like I can direct people to pose, I cannot take that direction from myself. Yesterday I wanted to kind of challenge myself to create a lighting setup that would allow for some really soft, gentle lighting and to do some self-portraits so that I could work through that. I had a few ideas for myself that I wanted to hit with this. I knew I wanted to do soft lighting. I knew the way I wanted to edit it was to be sort of like a little more um, like filmic and like classic looking. I knew I wanted the shadows to be gentle. I wanted the fall off to be gentle. I didn't want there to be more than like a third of a stop of, of, of differentiation between the light on the darker side of the face to the lighter side of the face. And then I knew I had like some some colors I wanted to hit. I wanted to hit some like greens and browns and and that kind of like warmer tones overall with what I was wearing. So that was the sort of idea. Let's jump to some of the footage from last night and I'll actually show you the setup. And then we will hop into Lightroom and we'll talk about all the photos and what I was doing with those photos and how I'm choosing to edit them, the different steps we took to kind of achieve the lighting we were looking for. Okay, so this is the basic setup here. It's gonna look a little bit ramshackle right now, but here's what's up. We've got one main light that we're using here. This is a speed light and it's set to 164th power. It is the Godox V1, and that is going into a big fat umbrella that is white on the inside and bouncing back onto me from there. We've got this here, this white muslin-y kind of thing, and that is just going to bounce a little bit of light back. I've also got one light back here that you won't be able to see, so let's go for a walk. So, uh, there's a dog. Uh, this light would be off normally. And then over here, we have one. Oh, are you gonna focus? You gonna focus? Slow and steady. Sick. We have one light here and that has some barn doors on it. It's just a little sliver of light that is coming back as a hair light. Another key to this was making sure that I was pretty far away from the background. That's one of the reasons we actually did the square crop is because for me to get far enough away from the background with the focal length I was using, which was 75 millimeters and a full frame perspective, I had to be like, oh, I would say like eight or nine feet, eight feet maybe about seven or eight feet away from the backdrop so that there was enough separation and so that I could adjust it so that I was getting better light onto me and not spilling too much onto the background because I still wanted to have some separation there. So. Okay, so you guys are about to see how uncomfortable I can get in front of a camera when it's not a video where I can just goof around and you actually have to just see me posing. So if you're ready for that, first things first, this is our background here. Um, using the background ease for a lot of my shots, which is just this kind of velvety textured drapes that I picked up at HomeSense. Um, so we have our first lighting here. I tried a few different things. If we um, if we skip over here, we're using the Eterna Profile, and this is our first shot here. So I wanted to shoot in a square format, I knew that, and I wanted to try and encourage myself to fit within this box, partly because I also knew that with the focal length I was using and how far away I had to be from the background, I was going to basically dirty the shot um, where you would see the uh, the sides of everything and I didn't want to see that. So I just thought, hey, what the hell, 
might as well work in the square format here and, and see what we can do. So this is our first shot. So right away, you can see we've bumped our exposure a little bit. I haven't done anything with our curve other than just bump it up a little bit and that's just lightening everything up. From there, the contrast is at zero, highlights at minus 13. I've brought the shadows up a fair bit and I've brought up my whites a little bit. That's pretty much everything we've done on the light side of things. In the color, I've adjusted our temperature, warmed it up a little bit, increased our vibrance because we are using that Eterna profile and it's a really nice profile, but it definitely just brings down all of your colors quite a bit. From there, looking into our color mix, we haven't done a huge amount. We've upped the saturation in the skin tones a little bit, uh, but we've left them where they are in terms of the hue. We can run through some of the photos here uh, as my iPad struggles to keep up. You can see we got a little bit hotter on the um, on the right side here where you're seeing a little bit more of those highlights. So I just applied the same uh, the same settings to all these photos and then we can kind of come in and fine tune. So with this one, we might just bring down our highlights a little bit, soften things up a little bit there. Our shadows could even come up just a tiny bit. And this is it. Um, pretty, pretty simple. Again, that hair light acting to just kind of separate everything out. Um, going to this, we would probably do the same thing. You can see I just worked with a few different poses here so that overall we can see what works best for me. Uh, and uh, the short answer is none of it because I feel very uncomfortable in front of the camera in this way. I do also look a little bit like a vampire. Uh, in that case, what we might do is actually just bump our saturation a little bit more so that we get a little more life into the skin. Normally I wouldn't do like a broad saturation adjustment like that, but sometimes it can work out. So. We could even go down here to our mixer and uh, just see what happens if we bump up our saturation a little bit. I like that, that looks good. That would be something I would probably apply to everything. So if we go into here, copy our settings. I think everything we just did to this photo should work well in the next few. So we'll paste those settings and we'll see. Yeah, we've got some nice saturation here. I think I would actually probably then bring down my saturation a little bit and even bring down my contrast a little bit in a photo like this. We do have a bit of an adjustment where we're seeing maybe a little more than that third of a stop of, of difference between the light and the dark that I wanted, but, but we're kind of getting there. From here, took off the jacket and everything. We kind of just went with the t-shirt so we could see what, what that looks like. And here's where you're seeing some more softening of the light and where I think we're kind of like hitting what we want to do. If you look over to the shadow side here, you can really see the kind of source of the hair light. And I don't, I don't know that I love that. So it's hard when you're doing a self portrait because there's only so much you can do and you're shifting around and moving a little bit. I was also using the Fuji X app to take all the photos. So there's a bit of a delay and lag and, and it, it's not the best setup, but uh, overall you can just see that um, playing with that uh, distance from the camera is what's going to affect that hair light the most for me. So the easiest thing I could do because I couldn't necessarily change everything on the fly very easily because I was taking the photo and posing is just shift where I am a bit. So by coming forward a bit, it means that that, that hair light was kind of spilling onto the backside a little bit more, just making it a little bit easier for me to um, adjust things and not make it look quite so sourcey. I don't take photos this way super often because I don't find this to be like the most interesting way to photograph. Um, but I do think if we were to do this again, we'd probably throw up like a lighter background so that we can really achieve again that super ultra soft light look. But just kind of working with what we had, getting some test images here, we can see that overall we've got something pretty nice. Um, we've messed around with some of the different poses here and you can see um, when I <laughs> kind of turn towards the hair light, it becomes very obvious and it acts as less of a hair light and more of like an accentuating light on the other side of the face. So if we apply some quick edits here. Um, that's maybe a bit much, I'm a bit orange there. So we'll bring that down a little bit. The only other thing we might wanna do to this photo is to uh, do a little bit of work on the eyes. So this is something you could do in Photoshop. This is something you could do with AI masking, but if you're using an iPad like I am, your only real choice is to put brushes in and, and that's a bit of a pain, but but we're gonna try for that. So we're gonna add this this brush here and we are just going to Go around the eyes a little bit. So we have this set to being like decently feathered, but not too, too much. It doesn't matter to feather it like a ton here because of what we're doing. So again, we're just gonna bring this kind of around the eyes and, and I'm going pretty quick here. I would kind of fine tune this a little bit, but overall what we're trying to do here is we're just going to bring up our exposure a little bit, something around there. 
We're going to bring up the whites a little bit, and then we're just going to increase the saturation and warm up. Okay, so if we look here, if we turn this on and off, so this is with it on, this is with it off, on, off. Uh, it looks very intense when you see it on versus off over and over, but if you just settle with the image for a minute, you'll see that it, it is not quite as intense as it looks. Uh, the other thing we could do here would be to add one more brush. We're going to go in, we're going to feather this one quite a bit, and we'll bring it up a little bit, and we're just going to go in underneath the eyes a bit, bring up our shadows a fair bit. Now this is obviously like, we could go crazy with this and like make it look absolutely insane. Less is more. We're just going to um, drop down our contrast a little bit. Okay, and with this one as well, let's just see this really quickly on and off. So you can see we've just lightened things up just a little bit. It does look pretty evident when you're looking at it close up, but so if we zoom out a little bit, you can just see that just like lightened things up a little bit. Um, yeah. Now this is where I'd probably take this into Photoshop and I do a bunch of little corrections. Um, we could try a couple of them here really quick and just see how they do. Um, we might try and just adjust things a little bit here to get some more softness. So yeah, there's like a million, a million adjustments we could make here and we could do a lot of little things to kind of like, we could work on some of the highlight hot spots here. Oh God, we're so zoomed in on my face. Same with the chin. We could just kind of adjust all of that using some brushes, that kind of thing. I tend to use the idea that uh, Sean Tucker always says, which is like, give someone a really good skin day. So like, if there's something on the skin that wouldn't be there in two weeks, remove it. Um, but other than that, if it's something that's essential to sort of how they look, then don't touch it. But yeah, give someone a good skin day. So yeah, that's the basic shoot. That's how we're going from um, trying to get something fairly, uh, you know, flat and boring to add a little bit more life into it, but still get that nice, soft, gentle roll off and, and work with things like the umbrella and the hair light and the bounce sheet to really kind of get a look that we're happy with. That's it. Super quick, easy look at how I went about creating a kind of soft lighting scenario for myself and, and worked through something that I wasn't very comfortable doing, which was creating self-portraits using gentle lighting. You know, the thing about gentle lighting is you just, you can't hide anything in it because there's no shadows to hide anything in. So you really have to think about what you're doing and, and how you're approaching things. And, and that's helpful for me as somebody who can easily get away with creating those like dramatic moody shots to kind of you know, go around the idea of, of kind of nailing lighting and composition. Uh, it's a really helpful exercise. Now I know it's something that I can kind of put into my toolkit and say, here's a certain setup I could use if I want to create really soft, gentle, kind of more flat lighting to try and get certain features out of my portraits that I otherwise don't get with my more dramatic stuff. Let me know what you think. Is this a lighting setup you've used before? Do you do something similar or something different? If you want to see more lighting specific stuff, I actually have a pretty cool video coming up featuring a new light that was sent to me and I'm excited to check that out. So look for that at the end of the week. Thank you so much. Appreciate you. Go out there, take some portraits. Let me see them and have a great day. Peace.